What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network, continuing our reading of ZeroLink, the Bitcoin fungibility framework. Chapter 3, Part B, Postmix Wallet. The privacy requirements of the Postmix wallets are stronger than that of the Premix wallet. The Postmix wallet must not breach its user's privacy and it should work in the same way as every other Postmix wallet. For example, if only one wallet software is used as a Postmix wallet and it supports replace by fee, blockchain analysis cannot come to valuable conclusions. However, if different wallet software is used as Postmix wallets and one of them does not support it, Blockchain analysis can identify which wallet software is used as a Postmix wallet. The first implementation of Postmix wallet will set precedence. In the future, when multiple implementations are created, it is important that these implementations are indistinguishable from the first implementation. Basic Postmix wallet requirements refer to the requirement that the wallet software must fulfill in order to avoid aftermix de-anonymization. Assuming the wallet software is the only wallet software that is used as a Postmix wallet of a specified mix, the Postmix wallet uniformity requirements refer to the requirement that the wallet software must fulfill in order to avoid aftermix de-anonymization, assuming the wallet software is not the only wallet software that is used as a Postmix wallet of a specified mix. Redesigning the Postmix wallet based on the clusterfuck wallet idea and considering possible join market additions should be interest of the future research. Coin selection. The basic Postmix wallet requirements is a Postmix wallet must prevent joining inputs together and the Postmix wallet uniformity requirements. And as we can see here in this chart, if the Postmix wallet would function as a normal Bitcoin wallet, the observer would notice Postmix transactions that are joining together mixed outputs. In this case, the real anonymity set of all the users who participated in the same mixes would suffer. Adding coin control features to the Postmix wallet account in the same way as Bitcoin Core does encourages more conscious Postmix wallet management. Nevertheless, users would eventually still join inputs together. It is better to prevent input joining in Postmix wallets altogether. This, of course, naturally restricts the usability of the wallet. This prevents the user from making bigger denomination payments at first, then they are constrained to spending a maximum of the biggest change amount. This is expected to be violated in many ways such as the user could keep sending out its freshly mixed coins to another wallet and join their inputs together there. This restriction, however, is necessary in order to narrow the gap between the threshold and the real anonymity set of all the users in the mixer. To enhance the usability of a post-mix wallet, the wallet may implement coin control features. The wallet may offer users to do donate smaller change outputs instead of getting them back and this could even finance the development of such a wallet. The wallet may also implement a visualized transaction history instead of a transaction wallet history, as we can see right here. The privacy improvement suggestion. This transaction generates a change output where you later spend these change outputs. The transaction will be connected to this transaction of yours. More importantly, if you later join this change output together with other unspent transaction outputs, this would be used by blockchain analysis to link together your wallet address. So keep the change output, spend the whole coin, or donate the change to the development of hidden wallet. Deep change attack. While the recommended strict coin selection property separates mixed coins from each other, it does not protect against dead change attack. Change outputs will be used for different purposes. Therefore, it is possible to connect those payments together. Fortunately, it does not affect the anonymity set of the user who participated in the mix, but it does affect individual privacy. To encourage more cautious user behavior for post-mix wallets may implement a transaction labeling system, so users can decide manually what purchases is it does not care about if they are connected uh, together by third-party observers. Additional anonymity set. 
A Postmix wallet may offer to make a user's first purchase to be a regular coin joint transaction without usage of a fixed denomination to additionally anonymity that can be achieved. In this coin join, every input transaction in the same denomination, and therefore an observer will not be able to tell who wanted to pay who. It can only figure out which change belongs to which in active output. And we see that the change script public key has a post mix wallet uniformity requirement that the post mix wallet should always generate pay to witness public key hash script public key hash as the change output for the build transactions. And a active script pub key should build a post mix wallet should be able to build transactions to pay to public key hash, pay to witness public key hash, pay to script hash, and pay to witness script hash active outputs. If all Postmix wallets software would only be able to spend the pay to public key hash active outputs, expect, except one Postmix wallet software that supports pay to witness public key hash active outputs. Two, then blockchain analysis can identify the outlier Postmix wallet software. The transaction output indexing. Postmix wallets should index its build transaction output randomly. A post-mix wallet, due to its design, will only have one input and a maximum of two outputs at all time. Uniform indexing of outputs is necessary in order for multiple post-mix wallet implementations to look the same. A post-mix wallet should use the random indexing of outputs. Random indexing is not exclusively beneficial for post-mix wallet uniformity. Conversely, it has other privacy benefits. When a wallet software always generates the change output on the second item index, observers always know which output is the change. It must be mentioned that BIP69 lexicographical indexing of outputs was created for the same purpose. However, random indexing is slightly more private. If a blockchain observer wants to know if a transaction in, is in a wallet, using this BIP leaves a track because it only deterministically algorithm, while random indexing leaves no track. Fee rate estimation. Postmix wallets should utilize fee rate sanity checks through the same web API that it uses by all the Postmix wallet software. One way blockage analysis attempts to figure out which wallets uh, which wallet a transaction was constructed by is by examining the fee patterns. Therefore, Postmix wallets implementation should be unified fee estimations. Bitcoin Core estimate smart fee may differ node by node based on how much information is available to the node. Usually, if a Bitcoin wallet is not built on top of Bitcoin Core's RPC API, it either implements its own fee estimation algorithm or uses a public API. Postmix wallets should utilize fee rate sanity checks through the same web API that, it, that is used by all other Postmix wallet software. The first implementation of the Postmix wallet will set precedence. The sanity check should range from Bitcoin Core's RPC, estimate smart fee one conservative, to estimate smart fee 1008 economical. Postmix wallet should be able to produce any integer Satoshi per byte fee rate that falls between the sanity check. And it can be done, for instance, salting results with randomizing or from the UI with a slider where the steps are integer numbers. In order to avoid the identification of the transaction by timing attacks execu executed by the web API, Postmix wallets should retire retrieve sanity checks from the common web API randomly from every three to 10 minutes. Fee calculation. Postmix wallets should calculate the final fee rate, fee virtual size. Postmix wallets should make sure that the final fee falls into the sanity check. Virtual size is defined in the segregated witness wallet development guide. If any Postmix wallet produces a fee that does not fall into the sanity check within 10 minutes fault tolerance, blockchain analysis companies can reverse engineer the source code of the Postmix wallet software, figure out which wallet software can produce such results, and the Postmix wallet software can be tied to the transaction, replaced by fee. Postmix wallets should prevent its users from utilizing replaced by fee as it is often used features. One on, 
on the other hand, its usage is beneficial. On the other hand, the way RPV is used by wallet software helps blockchain analysis to identify the wallet software in use. Creation of a common algorithm utilizing of RBF should be an interest of further huge research. Brand Cohen's article might be a good starting point. Spending unconfirmed transactions. A post-mix Wallex should let its users spend unconfirmed outputs. It is possible to spend the output of a transaction that did not yet confirm. Postmix wallet should let its users spend unconfirmed transactions. If a postmix wallet does not let its users spend unconfirmed outputs, and blockchain analysis finds a postmix transaction that spends an unconfirmed output, it is knows that outputs cannot come from that that the postmix wallet software. Since spending unconfirmed outputs can be dangerous, postmix wallets may discourage the user to do so, for instance, with a warning. Retrieving transaction information. Postmix wallets must retrieve information in the private way. Retrieving private transaction information from the blockchain is the most challenging part of implementing a wallet that aims to not breach its user's privacy. Querying the balance of the central server shares private information with the central server. Bloomfilter SPV wallets are not sufficiently private either. There are four types of wallet architectures Link classifies as private. A Bitcoin full node, since they download all the transaction, the network has nobody can tell who is interested in what transaction. Full block downloading SPV wallets. Such wallets download all transactions that network has from the creation of the wallet. Con consequently, they do not need to wait weeks for initial block downloading, and they do not store hundreds of gigabytes of blockchain data. They throw away what they do not need. There are three implementations of such wallets, all in the testing phase, Jonas Schnelli PR for Bitcoin Core, Adams Fiscor's hidden wallet, and Stratis Breeze wallet. Transaction filtered full block downloading wallet, which only exists as an idea today, and zero link specific transaction retrieval. There is an easier and more user friendly way to achieving this. The post mixing wallet may accept deposits by to be directly made to its address without mixing. Since the input joining is disallowed, there is no reason to enable that. However, the Postmix wallet disables it. It can be simply queued, query all the Tromian coin join transactions and all its zero link compliant children, since it is not interested in any other transactions. This would result in drastically better user experience because it does not need to wait hours for blockchain syncing. Furthermore, because every coin join transaction fails, a new Postmix wallet output is registered. The Postmix wallet should be monitored in huge depth. While it is unlikely that an attacker tries to disrupt every round because of the reasons detailed above, nevertheless, a post-mix wallet is recommended to monitor 1,000 clean addresses after the last used one. In the case, a post-mix wallet would still show the right balance if the pre-mix wallet participant is disrupted rounds continuous for two days. Alternatively, if the tumbler serves already registered but unused addresses, the post-mix wallet can use this to avoid monitoring huge depth. Transaction broadcasting. The basics is that post-mix transactions must broadcast transactions in a private way. And for post-mix, wallets should broadcast transactions over Tor through the same web API as they use by all other post-mix wallet software. As Dandelion Privacy Preserving Transaction Propagating BIP candidate explains, Bitcoin transaction propagation does not hide the source of transactions very well, especially against supernode eavesdropper that form a large number of outgoing connections to reachable nodes in the network. From the point of view of a supernode, the peer that relays the transaction first is most likely to be the true source, or at least a close neighbor of the source. Various application level behaviors of Bitcoin Core enable eavesdropper to interfere the peer-to-peer -peer connection topology, which can further help identifying the source. Dandelion's explanation only applies to full nodes. Most wallet software is not constantly relaying transactions, for instance, and when the wallet software only connects to other nodes on the network to broadcast its transactions. Zero-Link classifies broadcasting transactions over an anonymity network to the Bitcoin network as private. Thus, in order to fulfill basic Postmix wallet requirements, Postmix wallets must broadcast transactions in a private way. Postmix wallets should change anonymity network identity uh, between every transaction broadcast. 
In order to fulfill the PostMix wallet uniformity requirements, PostMix wallets should broadcast transactions over Tor through the same web API that is used by all the other PostMix wallet services. PostMix wallets should broadcast every transaction on different circuits. Private transaction broadcasting, especially Dandelion, should be an interest of future research. Moving money between post and premix wallets. The user may send transactions from premix to postmix wallet directly. Because joining inputs are not allowed in postmix wallets, therefore the coins will be separated. The user should not send transactions from postmix wallets to premix wallets directly. Because premix wallets join inputs together. If an observer notices any connection between premix wallet coins and postmix coins, it may re-establish a link in the coin join transaction. Pierce, thank you very much for joining me here for chapter three, part B, the postmix wallets of ZeroLink, the Bitcoin fungibility framework. And as always, thank you and see you on the next show. Bye bye.